Kennedy. Thank you. Yes. The only reason I made it is because the goal made it today.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. It's my wife. Praise God. Good to see everybody. God's good. Amen. Do we have any uh, prayer requests this morning or testimonies? Yeah, Rick. Let's, in fact, let's pray for her right now. Father, we just come in agreement that uh, no weapon formed against her can prosper. And Lord, we just uh, declare healing and wholeness right now. Clear thinking, no pain, no, no side effects or after effects. But that she begin to feel the power of God and the healing of God right now. Right as we're speaking, Lord, we know that you're with her. And we release our faith for that healing right now, Lord. For total recovery, no pain, no discomfort. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise God. All right. Anybody else? Testimony, prayer requests. Everything's good? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Danny. Uh, I want to pray for all my workers down at Post Office. Uh, Praise the Lord. We'll just believe that God will bring, take all the confusion out of it, yeah. and just bring a, a, a togetherness, a, 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 a focus, amen, to where God can uh, work in their lives and where they can do the job that they were hired to do, and, and we can all benefit from that, amen, because you all get mail, right? Praise the Lord. So it would be a good thing. And I apologize for any wrong mail that comes out. Yeah. Too late. Too late. I'm holding it against you anyhow. Praise the Lord. I gotta have some, I gotta I gotta have a face, you know, to, to you know to be angry with. So now that's good. We appreciate it. And, and uh, amen. Every business, every. Uh, it's all Tammy's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, every, every you know every business every everyone that has a, a goal and a purpose uh, they need to have unity. Everybody knows that you ever work in any place where there's uh, confusion and division, not much gets done, and what does get done usually gets fouled up. So, amen. We don't want it fouled up. Praise God. We'll just believe that. Anyone else? Dr. Tammy. Um, I'll bring this together. Uh, I just want to hopefully encourage people to uh, be in the Word and to Jody's been talking about, and we've all been talking about, it's all about him. He's the one that draws us. He's the one that loves us. He's the one that died on the cross for us. He's the one that finished the work. It's really all about him. And if you step and take yourself out of the picture and realize every single bit of it is about him. I got a call from my cousin last night, and I spent the better part of an hour talking to her on the phone. Now, this is a cousin who grew up not that there's anything wrong with Catholicism or any other religion, but we all know it's not about religion. And she's fell in love with Jesus and been hungry for the Lord, and I was just thinking, because this whole conversation I'm talking to her about, she's, it's grace, it's grace. Yes. People have got to understand the yes. grace of God, or they're not going to understand the rest of it. Yes. Which, if you know her past, is amazing in itself mm -hmm. because I can remember mom uh, what two years ago even three years ago multiple times my mom would run into her at high vee and he would stand in the parking lot and he would talk mm -hmm. and mom would share the grace of God with her mm -hmm. and she wanted to argue because she wasn't quite there again mm -hmm. you know those mom continued to confess what she knew was the grace of God yes. and little by little those seeds are planted in her life so what it's taken three years. Yeah. God is the one that's, you know, yes, yes. Uh, fertilizing those seeds and making yes. them fulfill in her life. And she is so hungry for God and it's so about the grace of God in yes. her. And I was just totally amazed at where she's come in a short period of time. And I believe that God's doing that with all of us. Yes. 
Yeah. So I just love him and I'm so grateful for the revelation that he's given us and his love and that he is doing it. I don't have to worry about it. He's got it. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes, Carol. I was talking to my sister yesterday, and she said, um, you know, you're going to have to get rid of that. That's your sister? Mm-hmm. Your sister. Let's pray for Norma right now. Praise the Lord. Well, Father, we just agree together right now for Norma. You're aware of this situation. You knew about it long before we brought it up. But we come to you because we know you are able to do all things. And nothing is impossible with you, Lord. So we know distance, space, and time has, has no impact on this. We just release our faith right now for Norma's healing and deliverance. For a quick recovery. Amen. That she'll be... Uh, stable, that her mind will be right, that her body will be right, and that most importantly, Lord, her spirit will be right with you. Lord, that through all of this, you will touch her, touch her spirit, touch her heart, Lord, and open her up to the love of God and to the goodness of God, that she might receive all the fullness of God, not just her healing, Lord, but everything that you have for her. Give her hope, give her faith, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Who else? Praise the Lord. Yeah, Myron. I just got a little testimony. My son is 22. Uh, he's been running the gauntlet. They call it Contra the Gauntlet. It's a four-mile race over obstacles and everything. And he did it last year in winter track about an hour and a half. And yesterday up in Wolfstock, Wolf he did it in an hour. Praise wow. the Lord. And he's, awesome. yeah, his brother came down from Duluth and was there. Thank the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Mike. Uh, a couple things. Uh, pray for uh, Cindy. She'll be here in a little bit. But, uh, she's been, I believe it's an infection on her foot. Um, we just played with the healing on it. I don't know if it's uh, fungus or whatever. We're treating it. Uh, just pray for whatever it is to be reversed in our system. Uh, second of all, for James, traveling mercy for him. You say he's in Arkansas, Joe. This is Joe Atkinson. Uh, Amen. Amen. Hello, Joe. Good to have you with us. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray for James and let's pray for Cindy right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we just agree together right now that Cindy will be healed, that any infection in her body will leave. Amen. Never to return. In Jesus' name, complete the healing in her body completely, Lord. Not just her foot, but in every area of her life. We release our faith for that. We know, Lord, that you are with James. And we just ask you to watch over him, protect him, give him a a great time in Arkansas, and bring him back safely without any accidents or incidents, and we'll give you all the thanks and the praise for it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Yeah, Peter. Uh, A couple things. Uh, Went to the doctor Friday. I'm still healed. Praise the Lord. So this is a prayer and a, te- and a testimony book. So his brother kind of controls the situation and wouldn't let my friend, um, who's 62, come, go up and see his dad, who's 88. His dad ha- ended up having like a uh, couple heart attacks. He has a do not revive order, but you know we've been praying that he would be alive and my friend would get up and be able to talk to him about the Lord again. And the doctors didn't honor that those do not revive orders and brought him back each time. And, you know, it's, I mean, we've been praying for him for a while, just praying that, that uh, God will just somehow move on my friend's dad's heart to, to receive more. He's been talking about it for years to him, and his dad just hasn't been able to do it at all. All right, we're going to pray for him. Do you know his name, Peter? Uh, I don't know his dad. Okay, well, the Lord knows. 
the Lord knows his name, and we're just going to believe that we know that it's not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That everybody have a change of mind about God and turn back to him and trust him. So we're going to believe this for this gentleman in Alaska. We know that that's the will of God, and if we pray according to his will, we know that he hears us, and if we hear us, then we know we have our petition. So I'm just saying this guy's saved. He's as good as saved right now, but we're going to believe and thank you, God, right now for the for the complete restoration of this man spiritually so that he will come to know you in the power of your spirit, amen, that he will be born again, hallelujah, the water and the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, that his life, amen, whatever life he has left will be lived for you, Lord, that he will know you and have comfort and peace and the fear of death will no longer haunt him or bother him in any way. He'll look forward, amen, to being with you in paradise. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you right now that you're touching this man, that he will be totally open and receptive to you and to the word of God. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Did I see any other hands up? Praise the Lord. Yes, Don. You know, the Bible says in the day, Jesus told him, he said that in the last days it would be like the day of Noah. They were marrying. Jane and I were talking about that, and this has begun, I just, I'm asking if anybody else has had this, because I began to get this picture that the time of the Gentiles is extremely short. We've had centuries, the Gentile nations have heard, many have accepted, individual people, now that's different, you know, a lot of them have, but the Bible teaches that there's a time that the Gentiles, it'll be over. Yeah. And we were talking about the miracles, the healing, the raising the dead, and all that. And I asked her, I said, do you think that those things are going to be more for Israel in this very last time? So that they get, yeah. they see the power of the Oh, I feel holy. Yeah, amen. That I, I'm, I'm afraid sometimes that we think there's more time than there is. Yeah. If, if you look on any of the programs that deal with the Second World War and you really look at what the Nazis did to the Jews, uh, I told Jane, I said, there cannot be a worse slaughter of Jews or there wouldn't be any left. There hmm. would be none. Six million they killed. So I, I, I talking to Alvin this morning too that maybe the tribulation he was speaking of is spiritual tribulation that the world's never seen. I believe we are in spiritual tribulation oh, yeah. that the, all, any that have come before us have never known. Yeah. That's why he warned us and he said, you know, hold fast, stand on his word because we were talking. My eyes get deceived. I, I'm like Saul was when I look out. Every day, more Philistines came into the valley, yeah. and he said, "You know, man, I, I'm a warrior. I know that this. I got to do something. I cannot wait on Samuel. I, I just can't. I know what he was going to do. I'll do it." The first thing Samuel said was, "What have you done?" Yeah. God is telling us, "Don't let your eyes." But we are living in a time when he said, if it were possible, yes. the very elect would be deceived. we are got to wake up and shake the slumber out of our eyes. We Amen. are right at the brink of the culmination of everything the Bible has talked about. And his ministry lasted three years. Tammy was talking about two or three years. Sometimes that seems like a long time to us, but... If you're over 40, look back three years. That yeah. Is yeah, exactly. That is nothing. That's so, right. I'm just saying. No, I mean. I don't know what I'm saying. No, I agree. I agree with you because, Be look, think about it. It says that the, it's because of what God's doing in the Gentiles that the Jews are provoked to jealousy right. and causes them to turn back and begin to question and, and, right. and begin to seek the Lord. And I really think that's why we're talking about Revelation. And it is revelation. We, you know, we can't confuse information and intellect with revelation. So it's easy then when somebody says something that 
in your mind seems stupid, and I don't mean that to be ugly, but I'm just saying it just seems uninformed or like they're just not on the right same page. It isn't because God doesn't love them or because they're demonic or anything else. It just means that the revelation hasn't really come to them. They, can, they may be able to even repeat some of the same things that we're talking about, but it doesn't make it revelation. It's still information until we begin to act on it. And I think that's why everything is escalating here in these last days is because unless we operate in the true gospel, unless we're living by grace and recognize that we are the righteousness of God in Christ, we're never going to do the things that God says we have to be doing in this last day in order to provoke the Jew to jealousy. They need to see miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, we've confused this in Christianity in a lot of ways. We've made it all about us, the, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with us expecting God to move in, in the miraculous. But the truth is we should be walking in divine health. We should be walking in prosperity. We should be walking in, in our healing. We, that ought to be our way of living. And so that when we can lay hands on those who don't have the same revelation, who don't have the information that we have, amen, amen we are to, to reach out to them. You know, we're supposed to be ministering to them, not spending all of our time ministering to ourselves. Praise the Lord. And I'm just saying, we ought to just be believing in our financial blessing. We ought to be believing in our healings. We ought to be believing in our deliverance and so on and so forth. Instead of spending entire church services trying to get that for us, we ought to be building our own faith up on the Lord Jesus so that we can go out and share this reality with other people. Amen. When that happens, believe me, there'll be something that is worldwide. It'll be something that can be seen. The Jews will see it. And look, it's just like with us. Uh, just to continue on with Don's thought, uh, unless I'm misinterpreting, there'll still be individual Gentiles saved, but not the Gentiles. The focus will not be on the Gentiles anymore. God will turn back to the Jew. Now, some Gentiles will still be saved. There'll still be people that will believe. Just like right now, today, and for the last 2,000 years, there have been individual Jews who have become Messianic Jews, have been converted, and they're still Jews, but they're Christian Jews. They're believers in the Messiah. But this thing is going to shift to where it has been for the last 2,000 years. The focus has been on the Gentile nations instead of the Jew. He's going to turn it back to where the whole focus will be on. Now look what's happened with the Gentiles. You can only imagine what will happen to the Jews who had this word to begin with. When it becomes revelation to them, I mean it will explode like an atomic bomb, amen, in the nation of Israel and in the people of Israel because they have the foundation they already have it. Amen. We've, had to, we've been developing that for the last 2,000 years and screwed it up most, in most cases until recently we're beginning to see things. that Not that we've arrived, but we've got a far deeper revelation and understanding of what God's intentions and purposes are in our individual lives and therefore collectively as, as, a, as the nations of, of the, the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. I mean, I'm just believing that we're going to see some things this great cloud of witnesses invested in all of this, and they're watching they're, because they recognize this is the bunch. This is, these are the ones that are going to experience everything that we invested in, everything that we've been believing for and believed for uh, throughout their lives. So it's an exciting time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. Did I forget to pray for anybody? Did we miss anybody? Yes, sir.
Yeah. Yeah. He gave it to me two weeks ago, but I ignored it. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Welcome to the human race. Right. Uh, but you know, that's what, and that's true, because what, ha what happens is we've, we've had this image of obedience as being do this thing, do that thing, do right. this good stuff. And, of course, there are some things we should do. But obedience is really agreement. He wants, I mean, we're, it's not like we're arguing with him. Sometimes we just forget or we get distracted by the life and whatever else is going on. But real obedience is to agree with God. If you agree with God, then you're going to walk out that reality, even though it may not be a, you know, an do A and then do B and then do C. It's just that you are, you're being led by the Spirit. You're in agreement with God, and therefore you can... You can hear God, in other words. I mean, if you're not in agreement with God, it's going to be difficult to hear him, right? right? You're going to be hearing, but you won't know that it's God or it's you or it's the devil or what it is. But if you're in agreement with God, then you can trust that it's God that's speaking to you, even if it sounds like you. Yes. Yes. And agreement, first you've got to believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if, you, if you're in agreement with God, then everything that God has is available. If you're in disagreement, now you've got to get past that in order to get, not because God's withholding it, but because you don't believe it. It's like why people don't get healed, because they don't believe that God heals anymore. Or the reason people don't prosper is because they don't believe that God really wants them to be prosperous. He wants them to be poor and needy. And No, He just wants us to depend on our prosperity from Him. Amen? So, amen. Trust and obey. Well, there's no other way. I mean, how can you obey if you don't trust, right? Yes. So praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sally. I just want to say, we're here for one purpose, one purpose only, and we're going to learn what we're going to learn. And we're supposed to get it inside of us because we're not Yeah, yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is looking for those who are in agreement with him. Yes. The thousand year reign, uh, there are people being born. We know, you know, a, hundred, a person a hundred years old will be like a child because they're going to live forever. Praise the Lord. And uh, that's part of our responsibility is to share this reality. Because, look, we, we can say we lived it. We have lived this. We, didn't, we, weren't, we weren't perfect, but we lived it, and we know what God wants for you and what God wants to do for you. Because imagine this. Some people are still going to rebel. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that just shows you how crazy the human race is and how, how obscene their thinking is in a lot of ways. There will be people in the millennial reign that will reject Christ. Somebody's got to be there, and that's part of what our... Our, uh, our calling will be, amen, after the uh, return of Christ. So, and I, I'm, a, I'm thinking more in terms of like what Don said too. This tribulation is spiritual. I mean, when you read the book of Revelation, I'm not looking for, you know, locusts the size of Volkswagens. I'm, not, I'm just not. I'm believing that these are metaphors for the kind of junk that the enemy is going to send against us, the kind of... Uh, demonic influences that are going to come. Now, why all of a sudden should they necessarily be visible in ways that they've never been? And before, because nothing else has changed. I mean, we're still in the same uh, uh, dispensation, so we should expect, if you're looking for the last days to be filled with, uh, you know, all sorts of weird flying objects and strange, you know, creatures and all this kind of stuff, then you need to turn to the uh, sci-fi channel and just, well, there's aliens everywhere, so praise the Lord. But I'm just saying, these are spiritual forces that we're fighting against, and they are not of this world. They're, from an, uh, they're in another dimension. 
and they influence is partly what I want to talk about today. Just this is about this is why we got to have some revelation of the Word of God and begin to operate in it because we cannot let the sense realm dominate us anymore, the physical realm. We've got to start thinking in terms of an invisible realm that's real, more real than this one is, or we're never going to, we're never going to get the battle won. We're, we're, God will have to wait for another generation. I want it to be this one. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Praise God. Is that, that's it, right? Amen. We got them all? All right. We prayed for each one individually as we prayed, so let's just... Uh, Let's go to whatever whatever uh, announcements have we got. I know we've got uh, Eastern Gate House of Prayer coming up. I think that's next week. If you have your phone turned on, please turn it to vibrate or turn it off. Uh, Roberto has this upcoming class beginning uh, August 7th, which would be tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Mondays for nine weeks. Uh, each Monday for the next uh, nine weeks is the uh, financial peace uh, seminar that Roberto is going to be leading. And if you haven't had a chance to register or get your uh, books and, and uh, materials, please see Roberto after church or you can get us. Be careful what you ask for, right? <laughs> yes, Lord. So, Amen. So if you can't be there, at least be praying for them to have an impact and the Holy Spirit will move and, right. and touch people's lives, okay? Time to praise the Lord. But yeah. first. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Juan and Rick, would you guys come and take up the offering for us this morning? Rick, por favor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, John, if you would, that's the blessing. God, we thank you today, Lord, for the word that you have given us, the living truth that you are in our hearts, God, to make us fall after you and trust in and love you, God, and just to be able to give of ourselves and our finances that you have given us give back to you that your blessing be upon it and multiply God to your glory in this church as we reach out Lord in your name and by your help and grace to lift you up and just to see the power of God moving through every area of Lord God that's been mentioned <clears throat> whether it's finances and the physical touch and the mental and the physical and the spiritual God everything that we need Lord to draw closer to you and lift up one another in prayer tonight Amen, amen. God bless you as you give. Praise the Lord. And uh, while they're taking up the offering, I would like to thank uh, for the last three Wednesday nights. I haven't been here. Two Wednesday nights, I had, we had multiple grandchildren. Praise the Lord. They are great, but my Lord, are they exhausting. So y'all know that. But anyway, we had a good time with them. But I do appreciate uh, Tim uh, taking one Wednesday night service, Suzanne uh, two weeks ago, and Jody last Wednesday. All of them did a fantastic job. If you weren't here, you should have been. Could have been blessed, praise the Lord. But the CDs are still available, so you can get that revelation, amen, uh, for yourself for a couple bucks, and it'll be good for you, praise the Lord. But anyhow, I appreciate them very much standing in for me. And... Uh, the next week, I'm gonna, we're going to be gone. Well, we're not actually, I guess we're going to be gone and not gone, but that's, thank you, praise the Lord. <laughs> I thought I was at home there for a minute, praise the Lord. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to be gone. Uh, I'll be here Wednesday night, and then we'll be gone Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, and Wednesday, and then we'll be back, whatever that is. However, that's a week. It's a full week, but something like that praise the lord so amen and uh i'm believing god i got to go thursday out to wolf eye clinic for uh, some tests and stuff so they're telling me i got cataracts 
I just don't think I can see very well, praise the Lord. I don't know what they are. But anyway, I got to go out there and have that checked out and, uh, you know, say, well, well, why aren't you believing God? I am believing God, but, you know, I got to drive a vehicle and uh, I'll take my chances, but Sally's freaking out and so is everybody else that meets me, <laughs> that meets me on the road, praise the Lord. So, yeah, so, hallelujah. Uh, get her a bicycle helmet. She's got white knuckles on everything you can hold on to, praise the Lord. And, of course, I like to add a little drama to each little road trip we take, praise the Lord. <laughs> keeps, keeps me awake when she's excited, hallelujah. So, anyway, it's all good in Jesus, amen. And uh, so I hope you'll all be here and, and uh, support those. Suzanne's going to be preaching. Uh, Tim's going to be uh, doing some preaching. So it'll be good. Everybody can be blessed. And... Uh, just participate and worship the Lord. That's what it's all about. Amen. Speaking of grandchildren, aren't they great? Praise the Lord. Because Sheila's wrestling one back there, and John just won the battle. Praise God. No, she just won the battle. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We, we love grandkids. Praise the Lord. They are the reward for not killing your children. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Anyway, God bless all of you. Let's worship the Lord and just uh, have an expectation that God's going to speak to you today and minister to you specifically. And I believe that he will. That's what he wants. If you can believe it, you can receive it. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Joey. Yeah. yeah. You ready in and out of season, Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all good? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Miss Drummer Roberto, shaking off some dust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be with James, yes, Lord. And watch over Suzanne and Michael as she is gone and her base sitting here um, being a base. And uh, Michael, uh, hi, how you doing, buddy? We're seeing him through the camera on the other end. Peter works and initiates it. And Myron uh, moves that stick thing on the background. So everybody stays in the picture. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's just worship and glorify him.
Move on your children, Lord. As I was worshiping this morning, I realized, I guess it was a revelation, that he not only gave himself for us, he gave himself to us. That vacuum in each one of us that we're born with, when we receive him, believe who he is and what he did for us, when we receive him, he fills that vacuum. And what we see is either our own perspective or his perspective. And that's always our choice. So today, I encourage you, let Jesus live through you. Look at life through his perspective. I can't tell you enough how much I love this church. This is our last Sunday here. And I'm sorry to leave. And we have not found a church like this down there. We've been to three churches. and. We're in a good church now, but it's not like this. You guys need to really value what you've got here. The preaching, the worship, it's, it's beyond normal. And I thank God for the opportunity to be here again for so long. God bless all of you.
But what I see right now is she has just taken like Elijah and Elisha. She has just thrown the mantle. And it's not just one mantle. I seen the sword of the Lord take that mantle and slice it into moldable mantles all across this room. It's floating on you right now. Who's going to pick it up? I challenged a pastor at a big church seven, eight years ago. Whom I saw at one point in one service while I was there for the two and a half years I was there. That the fire of God, the authority of the Lord had been on him. And it was at this part of the service where he came up just like Darlene just did and started declaring. And then he relented. He backed up. He backed out. And he went back. And I challenged him. This is part of what the Lord had put on my life. I'll go into any place, anytime, as the Lord leads me. And the doors will open and I'll be able to speak specific things to the small people, the great people. The Lord, all people are the same in his eyes. And I challenged this pastor. I said, why did you let that mantle fall on the ground when you were declaring the other week? And there's about eight to a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand people behind me at the end of the service. And I know he's wanting to talk to them. But I got in his face and I said, why did you drop your mantle? Why? The Lord wants to work through you. Why did you drop that mantle? He said, what are you talking about? And I explained to him what I saw two, three weeks ago. He says, I know the mantle's there. I said, why aren't you picking it up? He said, I know I need to go over there and pick it up. But why haven't you picked it up? And I couldn't get a straight answer out of him. I'm tired of going from place to place to different venues, different places, and walk into a room and see all these mantles laying on the floor. We got young ones here that need to learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've been talking to them about it, to receiving the Holy Spirit. Who will they learn from? I will teach on them, but it takes this body to let them see and experience that. The time is now, church. It's time to pick up your mantles. I've seen them put on shelves. I've even seen them put in frames on walls like, look what I did. Well, it's the Lord. He gave you the mantle. It's time to take your mantle. The Lord is looking for them to pick up his mantles, and I don't want to see those mantles on the floor anymore. I will be going out with the team next Saturday, and the Lord has a word for that too, but I can't release it now. If I go by myself, I go by myself. That is, I haven't asked the worship team yet who's available yet, but that's okay. I pray that they'll be able to go. But the time is now, church. The time is now. How many days have been wasted? How many weeks and months and years have been wasted because of your mantle laying on the floor? You've been hurt. Someone criticized you. Someone said something bad against you. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about yourself. It's about the Lord. He's waiting. He is holy. He's just waiting for someone to pick these things up. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. And Lord, forgive me for not picking up the fullness of the mantle that you have given me. For you alone are holy, Lord. And I worship you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the maturing of this, this body here, Lord, will come now forth. And yes, Lord, many look upon this church, and Lord, do they love what they see. But they haven't seen the fullness yet, Lord. Let the fullness come forth, Lord.
righteous and true. Thank you, Father. Praise God. We bless you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you and you alone. For though there be many gods, little g, there's only one true God. Hallelujah. And His name is Jesus. And we worship you. Hallelujah. In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Mike, as always. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Roberto. Praise the Lord. Good job back there on the drums. Praise the Lord. 
Praise God. Amen. Sunday school kids can be dismissed if they haven't already left. And uh, I do have a lot of scriptures this morning. But we'll try to move through it as quickly as possible without taking anything away from what the Lord wants us to do and say. But we do have a baby bed to pick up this afternoon. <laughs> praise the Lord. I'd just like to let you know on everything that's going on in my life, praise the Lord. we got another grandchild coming and... So we're gonna gotta go out to Western Moore and get a bed. So if you're if you're headed towards Western Moore, you want to keep an eye out for that gray pickup because the guy driving it, he's got this. You know, I'm trusting the Lord, so you better be too. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. The devil is a jerk. Praise God. Roberto, I'd like to start at Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm going to read verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 55, 10, and 11, familiar scriptures. We've, we've <coughs> talked about these many times, but I just want to uh, use them as a way of starting off here then, and then another scripture from the New Testament. But this is important for us to understand because there's nothing in here that God didn't intend to be in here, and he intended it to be in here for us, for us to be able to live our lives out in agreement with him and the way that he does things. Praise the Lord as children. We are, uh, you think about it, if, if he tells us to raise our children up in the way that they should go and they won't depart from it, did you imagine that he would do anything any differently? Exactly. He's raising us up in the way that we should go so that we won't depart from it, so that we can get everything that he has promised us, so that we can be fulfilled and whole in him, praise God. So this is Isaiah chapter 55, and verse 10 says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven... And returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So this is important. It's not just a kind of a cute colloquialism or something, kind of a neat way of saying something. This is God telling us how he operates. Yes, it is. Amen. All right, so let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but, it, as, it, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Praise the Lord. So, Paul says, when you receive from us the spoken word, the word of God, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth or in reality, the word of God. That also works in you if you believe. The word works in you if you believe it. Praise the Lord. Now, 1 Thessalonians was the first book written in what we call the New Testament, including the Gospels. If you, it, does, it isn't hard to take a, do a quick study of that. In fact, a lot of Bibles even have the, the dates and so forth when that particular book was written. But it doesn't take a lot of in-depth study to find out that 1 Thessalonians was written in 51 A.D., and the next closest book in the Gospels even was, was like 58 A.D. So it's the first book in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, that we have that was written. It was the first one to be written down. And up until then, all they had was the spoken word. I'm talking about in the New Covenant, under the New Covenant. All they had was what was being said. Of course, a lot of that was, and all of it was based on the Old Covenant, but a lot of that Old Covenant was misunderstood. So you've got to understand, when Paul was speaking to these people, they didn't have any New Testament. All they had was the Torah and, and part of what we would call the, the, uh, the Septuagint, which was the, the Psalms and some of these other books that were written in the Greek or in Aramaic. So 
That's, that's what they had at the time. So when Paul preached his message, it was just as authoritative as when he wrote it. When he was just speaking it. Amen? So he says, you accepted this word that I preached, not as though it was the words of coming out of some man's mouth or just words of a man, but as it is really, as it really truly is, the very Word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now the Word is always now. Yes. Amen. It, it has no time. It has no, it, it's God and His Word are one. God is timeless. He's eternal. This Word is timeless. It's always now. It has been, it is, and it will be the voice of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's never old. No. It's always new. Praise the Lord. The Word is present tense. Yes, it is. It's the living voice from God. Yes. The eternal, unchanging, living, almighty God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. For the Word of God is quick. That means alive. It's just another word for saying it's alive. The Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in His sight. And whose sight? The Word's sight. Praise the Lord. It's, not speak it's talking as though the Word is alive. It tells us it's alive, and then it tells us that Word... Nothing is hidden from it. Right. Amen. Amen. There's no, no creature that's not manifest in his sight or that isn't seeable or visible. But all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise the Lord. So it's quick. It's alive. Amen. And he then goes on to say that no created thing is hidden from him. All things are open and exposed before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That's why it's so idiotic for people to sneak around, amen, doing stuff. Sure. I mean, you're not hiding anything from God. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. It, it, well, maybe it's, it's, socially it's better because you don't get busted by other people, but the truth is God knows everything. He knows our heart. So what's the point? Right. So if we're, if we're being deceitful, it's really about other people. It isn't about God. And who cares about other people? This sounds beautiful coming from a pastor. How compassionate. I just mean the sun doesn't rise and set in them. It's God that has everything, life, that keeps everything moving. Amen? In whom we have to do. Praise the Lord. So what's he talking about here? He says the living the Logos, the living Word, that's the Bible, there is no created thing hidden from the eyes of the living Word. Mm -hmm. Everything lies open before Him. Praise the Lord. Look at John. Now let's go to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Again, these are all familiar scriptures, but God is really trying to seal this in us. Praise the Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things that were made by Him, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Now, we just read that the Word of God is alive. It's quick. It's, it's alive. It's not just words on a page. It is spiritual life. Yes. Praise the Lord. Just like Jesus. Yes. Like they're one and the same. And how many of you know that Jesus is exactly like God? Amen. Because they're one and the same. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Verse 14. That Word became flesh. Yes. It was made flesh. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now listen to what I'm saying. The Word is taking Jesus' place. We are the body of Christ. 
But if we don't operate in agreement with this word, we are some dysfunctional, right. epileptic, uh, you know, crippled, yep. dysfunctional body. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. The word is taking Jesus' place. The Word has all of the elements in it that were in Jesus. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Alright, stay in John 1, but just drop down to verse 5. Or back to verse 5, I'm sorry. John 1, verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Still speaking about this Word that was made flesh. This Word came... It was revelation. It was light, and it lit up the darkness, the ignorance, the, the, the unbelief, the wrong belief. But the darkness didn't like it. Amen? Drop down to verse 10 and 11, please, Roberto. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world didn't know him. He came to his own, and his own would not receive him. They received him not. Now here's what we have to get through to us. Reason, the sense realm, will take the word's place if you let it. The natural mind, that's what he's telling us here. He came to his own, they received him not. He was a revelation. He was the truth. And he came to this, this dark place, this place full of lies and, and, and questions and doubts and unbelief and, and they wouldn't receive it. Why? Because the sense realm will steal the word's place in you if you let it. Yes. Drop down to verse 12 and 13. But, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So acting on the word, obviously then, does not agree with the sense realm. Because we just saw what the sense realm did, it rejected it. Praise the Lord. Yep. The sense wars, the senses, yep. wars against the recreated spirit. Yep. Yes. Reason has to give place to the word. Yes. Yes. Natural thinking has to submit yes. to the word of God. Yes. Every knee has to bow yes. to the name of Jesus, yes. which is, by the way, the word of God. Everything has to bow to that. Every reason, every natural, sensual way of looking at things has to submit to the supernatural or to the spiritual life, amen, that is in Christ Jesus and therefore in this Word. Praise God. All right, drop down now to verse 16 and 17. And of His fullness... Have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Faith in God is faith in His Word. You can't have faith in God and not have faith in this. And if you have faith in this, you have faith in God because they're one and the same. It's not to be looked at as laws and rules, right. and regulations. Yes. is to be looked at as a person, and the closer you become to that yes. person, the more you understand why he talks the way he talks. Oh. Yes. Yes. Right. Instead of looking for a rule yes. that you can find fault with somebody with, how about looking to the God, yes. amen, who came in grace and truth? Yes. We have got this so screwed up, we think we are Bible scholars because we know rules. 
You don't know Sikkim, as my dad used to say, if you think that this book is about rules and laws and regulations. It's about a person. And that person is God who loves you and gave himself for you and expects you to live your life the same way. Why was it Jesus never found fault with sinners? Because he came to show them the true identity of God. A God who loves. Who isn't looking for fault. Who doesn't want sacrifice. He wants people to agree with him. To know him. To love him. Praise the Lord. Luke 1, verse 37, Roberto. Praise the Lord. For with God, nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Yes. Not one word of God is void of power. In other words, every word in here has power in it, yes. has life in it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Yes. And the angel departed from her. What did Mary say? Everything in me tells me this is insane. My body, I don't feel any baby. My physical senses. My eyes, I don't see any evidence. My senses of any kind, I've never had a relationship with a man. My intellect, everything is telling me this is bogus. All of history, all of my experience with other people, all that I know, all that I understand, to whatever degree of science they had, and, and, and health, and physiology, and biology, and so on and so forth, it all said no! Right. But Mary said, no word from God. That angel came speaking for God. No word from God can be void of power. Right. So in spite of everything that I feel, in spite of everything that I know, in spite of everything I think, I'm going with God. Be it unto me according to your word. Praise the Lord. Unbelief in the word is unbelief in God. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus is going to say someday, depart from me, I never knew you. You believed in some generic God, but you didn't believe in anything that he said. And you cannot believe in God if you don't believe in his word. Right. They're the same. They are. Yes. You can't make up your own God. We, that, that just doesn't, isn't, it, it doesn't fit the program. You don't get to make your own God. Right. He's here. Right. All right, back to Isaiah, if you will, Roberto. Isaiah 55 and 11 again. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. What he said to Mary. He said, it's not coming back to me void if somebody will believe it. Now, if Mary would have said, that can't happen, are you nuts? It wouldn't have happened. At least not to her. But because she accepted it. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing Whereunto I said it. When God said, I watch over my word to perform it, he was talking to you. Praise the Lord. He was talking to you so that you would never question his word. So that you would believe it. He didn't just, he's not like us, just sometimes we just say a bunch of stuff. Anything he said, he said with a pre just position. In other words, he had a predisposed agenda and a point to make, a reason for it, and it was for you. All you need to know and all you need to do now 
is act as though you know it's true. Amen. That's faith. Yes. You just act on what he said yes. as if it's true. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. You've got the promises of God. Yes. The thing that's yours is yours. Yes. You're not trying to get it. It's yours now. It belongs to you. Yes. The Word of God, just think it. The Word of God starts with thoughts. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my Father say. How, where, where did He hear Him say it? Yeah, exactly. In His mind. Right. He knew what the, the, the Old Testament Scriptures said. It wasn't like He was re recalling something that He said to Himself in eternity past. Right. He was operating as a human being. He needed right. to get His information right here like everybody else does. Right. He needed to get His revelation from there. That's why He said He found Himself in the scriptures, in Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he just said, I, when I think, I think God thoughts. Praise the Lord. I only say what my Father says. I only say what I hear my Father says. He had to think. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. Well, I'll try not to do that. Praise God. Mark chapter 4. I want to say something, but I don't want to say it and say it in the wrong way. So Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. We're going to read 26 verses here, but we'll read them quickly because you all know them, but I just want to put this into context. Remember what God said. Like the rain and the snow comes down out of heaven, so shall my word be that comes forth out of my mouth. It won't come back to me void. It will produce. It will come down like seed and the rain and the water and, it, and it, will, it will cause it to bring forth whatever it is I said. So he began to, again to teach by the sea. This is that same God from Isaiah. But now he's here in the flesh. He doesn't have a different agenda. So he's saying basically the same things. He's just saying it in a different way. So he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered with him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea or set in the sea, a ship that was set in the sea, and a whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. How many of you read? And you go, oh, man, I, it, just, I, it doesn't make any sense. Praise the Lord. It's not fallen on good ground. In other words, you're not believing it, you're not pursuing it, you're not trying to understand what God is saying to you. It's not a rebuke. I'm just saying all of us have been there. There's been per certain places where we read and we just go, I, God, what are, you what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, if you, if, if you don't get it, you won't get it. Yeah. I, in other words, what I'm saying is if you don't grasp what it is he's saying, you'll never get what it is he's saying. You'll, I don't mean get it. I mean you won't get it. You won't ever a be able to embrace it. So he fell, and some fell among thorns. Thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. He said unto them, He that hear, has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. What are you talking about? Is what they said. And he said unto them, Unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Now let me just say this. This works for anybody. Yes. Even an unbeliever. Yes. You can apply the truth of God's word and be blessed by it even though you're not going to heaven unless you accept Jesus as your Savior. Right. But you can apply the principles of the word of God and get benefits from it. Because it's for everybody. In fact, I just heard somebody talking about this the other day. When Jesus Christ died, he redeemed the entire earth. Everybody and everything on this planet was redeemed. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to heaven just because he, they were redeemed. To be redeemed, you have to accept your redemption. 
You've got to accept the one who redeemed you. Yes. How were we? Re we were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now everything was redeemed. Everything was paid for. Everything was bought back. Yes. Yes. But not everybody's going to embrace that, so not everybody's going to get the benefit of it. Right. Right. But everybody can benefit from the Word of God. Right. Yes, Unbelievers get healed. Yeah. Unbelievers prosper. Amen. They just don't have confidence. They don't have the same assurity that a believer has. So let me just move on. But that's what he's saying. He's telling them. I'm, I tell these in parables because if some of these heathen understood this power, guess what they would do with it? As unbelievers, they're going to use it to manipulate everybody else. Sadly, that's happened in the church to some degree. Praise the Lord. But... Think about this. I just, you know, say, Lord, how come I don't operate in the kind of power that Jesus operated in? When they came to arrest him, he said, I am. And they fell out. I mean, they were just zapped yeah. like they had been hit by a stun gun or something. Yeah. And whatever he said, he, and I, I, I said, Lord, how come? And he said, well, what about the first time you're on the freeway and somebody cuts you off? Well, bless the Lord. Or, pow! I'm sorry. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Now, I, don't, I, I say, well, I wouldn't do that. But I might because I think it sometimes. I think, man, I'd just like to... Yeah. <laughs> you meet my little friend, praise yeah. the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we think, oh yeah, we got it all together. And man, well, if I had that kind of power, I'd be such a wonderful person. No, I... I might be vindictive, I might be a jerk at times, and I might use it the wrong way just because I'm not thinking the thoughts of God all the time. Sometimes I'm thinking my stuff. Yeah. Amen. That's why our minds have to be renewed, and that's one of the reasons we don't operate in the kind of power that, that we know we're supposed to operate in. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, the woman with the issue of blood. She said this, if I could just touch his mantle, the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. I'll just say this, not to be contradictory or, but just that mantles were an Old Testament thing. We received the Messiah. What is the Messiah? He is the anointed and the anointing. When you get him, you've got the anointing. That's what the mantle represented, the anointing of Elijah, Elisha, whoever. Jesus, when that hat was going on, we were still under the old covenant. It was a prayer shawl, and the hem of their garments were the tassels and the pomegranates just like on a priest but that was the, the, the natural attire so I'm, I, I just want us to get to not think not mix the two the word of God has to be rightly discerned rightly divided for it to be effective now I get I understand you know the similes but what I'm saying is we can get that into our head to where we're looking for prayer shawls. We're looking for all kinds of stuff. We're looking for, you know, metaphors in every area when there, this is a reality. Yes. And we confuse that reality sometimes with what we think is the spectacular yes. when, in fact, what we really need is the supernatural. Yeah, right. And that's this word. Yes. Yes. You, can, you can do this. Every single one of you as a believer yes. can do this. And to encourage you to do other things, I get it. I mean, I understand what the motive behind it is, but the thing is, we, be, we still diminish the reality of who and what we are and what God wants to do in us. Yes. This, you, can, you just got to believe this, and whatever, if you believe this, all the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. Yes. Amen. We've been playing church for a long, long time. But I don't find any of that in here. Praise the Lord. 
And I don't care to do it just because somebody else did it. I want what this thing says. I want, I want to be who it says I am. I'm not trying to imitate anybody else. Look, the steps of the righteous are directed by God. If you will listen to him, you don't need to really listen to me. Praise God. We, we don't have to be focused. I mean, by, by that I mean, okay, if I'm, uh, I remember when I took an uh, insurance exam to sell insurance years ago. Passed the exam, but I was a lousy insurance salesman. Because I knew that most of it was phony. Most of it was just for me to get a premium, you know, for me to get a, a pay. And most of it was not necessary, but hey, you know, trying to make a living. So I didn't do it for very long. But I, I remember, and this is, goes back to like when you were in college and high school and different things. Do you remember being obsessed by the test? You know, to where you, that's what you're thinking about all the time. So you're driving the car, but you're actually thinking about, what well, if they ask that question, you know, what is this and, you know, that and the other thing and, and all that stuff. So you're just, look, if, if we have to live that way for Jesus, we're not of any good to anybody. We're just not. We need to be us. We need to be relaxed. We need to be who we are and just let God work through us. Praise the Lord. The moment we put on this stuff, we have just disenfranchised about three-fourths of the population of this planet. Because they don't, they don't buy it. They're looking for reality. We're always talking about reality. Well, we need to be real in order for them to accept us. Jesus was as real as it gets. He was not going around doing weird stuff. He was healing people, he was delivering people, and he was loving people. But he wasn't talking this... In fact, he was talking in ways that just really irritated the people who thought they knew what the Old Testament was about. So, where was we? I don't even know where we were, but back to someplace. And he said, unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, these things are done in parables. Seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. That they could take advantage of the system. All right? And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? And he said, if you, In other words, he's just saying, If you can figure this parable out, you'll be able to figure all of the parables out. Right. The principle is the same for all of them. Here it is The sower soweth the word. Take you right back to Isaiah. And my word, here's how my word works. Coming out of me, God Almighty, it comes out of my mouth and it comes down like seed. Comes down from above and it comes down like seed and it, and it grows up. And it will do whatever I sent it to do. Praise the Lord. We're children of God. God isn't going to give us some other way of doing things. We're his children. Yes. This, is how we're doing, this is how we're supposed to do it. The sower soweth the word. Yes. All right? These are they which by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. Yes. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word, immediately they are offended. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, and such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. Okay, what... You know, what's he, what's he saying here? He's saying that without revelation, there's no production. You can, you can know it intellectually, but never 
produce the 30, 60, 100 fold. Why? Because it's just, it's more information. Now that information, because it's information, it has to compete with all the sense information that you've got. All the natural education and teaching and experience and so on and so forth that you got. Right? Because it's intellect. It has to become revelation or it will never overcome the questions and the doubts and the fears that the natural realm put out there for you. Which is the weeds which is the hard ground, which is all the other stuff that it can't take root because all this other junk is there sure. competing with it. Sure. And unless you have revelation, you're just going to be battling all the time. It's not faith. It's, it's just a constant uh, struggle between what your natural reality is, what your experiences in life have been, what your uh, belief systems are, your natural education, so on and so forth, and what you feel and taste and such and so on, it, it will always compete with this revelation. Yes. But until it becomes revelation, it's on, it's on common ground. It's all the same. Yes. Yes. Unless you pull up the weeds, unless you stir up the soil, clean out the rocks, mm -hmm. you're just constantly going to struggle between intellect mm -hmm. and the Word of God. And you'll try to make the Word of God fit right. your intellect yeah. right. instead of making your intellect fit the Word of God. Yes. Right. That's what this whole conversation here is really about, all right? These are they that are sown on good ground, all right? Move on to verse 20. And he said unto them, it, say, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not be set on a candlestick? For there's nothing hid. We read this right off the bat, right? Nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, with what measure you meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given. And to he that hath not, from him shall be taken even what he has. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Kingdom of God, we're talking about it all the time. It's in us. So we say, well, I want a miracle, Lord. I... I want healing. I need a financial breakthrough, Lord. Help me, Lord. Amen. What you plant and what you weed determines the crop that you get. That's the truth. Yes. That's the truth. Listen, if you don't plant something, yeah. something's going to grow anyway. Yeah. And that something that's going to grow is weeds. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Then you're going to have to pray for crop failure. Because yeah. you're going to have all kinds of crap yeah. Yeah. that you don't want. First right. Peter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Praise the Lord. So you take God's Word, the incorruptible seed, and you sow it. You plant it. And then you tend the soil. Praise the Lord. Romans 11... Verse 30. Romans 11, verse 30. And I'm going to read right through 12, 2. Romans 11, 30 through Romans 12, verse 2. For as you in time past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Now we're talking about the Jews. This is what Don was talking about earlier. For we 
back before the new covenant, didn't believe God. Were aliens, were separated from God, had no hope, right? But now we've obtained mercy because of their unbelief. Because they didn't receive the word, God turned to us. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Praise the Lord. This is exactly what Don was talking about. Unless we begin to receive this word the way they did originally, which caused God to turn from the Jews because they wouldn't believe it, unless we do it, our time will eventually end too. Our responsibility is to do what they didn't do. Now we can point our finger back there and say, I don't know why they didn't know Jesus and all that kind of stuff, but unless we're going to show the same grace, the same mercy, the same belief in this word, they're not going to get it. They need something miraculous. They need something supernatural. They need to see a manifestation of of God's Word. Yes. Jesus yes. came as a manifestation of His Word. Yes. The Word became flesh. Yes. Now we have that Word. He is in this Word. Yes. The only way for them to turn back to God is to see a manifestation of the Word of God. That's what it took for us that's what it's going to take for him. I'm speaking in terms of Gentiles now. So, he says, For God has concluded them all in unbelief, right. that he might have mercy on everybody. Yes. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Whoever gave to God, and then God's going to give it back. For of him, through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He's not talking this. He's talking about the sense realm. Your body is how you contact this natural world. And that's what he's talking about. Shut that off yes. and operate by the Spirit. Yes. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your senses back to God and yes. go by what the Word says and not what your senses tell you. Yes, Lord. To whom be glory, to Him are all things. To whom be glory. I beseech you therefore that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. And be not conformed to this world. That, that's the context from verse 1. Right. Don't be conformed to this world that operates strictly by what I see, taste, touch, smell, and feel. Yes. Right. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. For who? For those who didn't believe and turned God turned from to us. Yes. So that we can now be the manifestation yes. of God in the flesh so that they can see, hey, that he was the Messiah. Yes. The Messiah has come and we rejected him. Yes. Praise God. It's more than us just getting a blessing. Yes, we'll get a blessing because you can't be blessed. You can't bless without being blessed. Right. Amen. You can't bless somebody else without that blessing flowing through you. But the point is, it's not about us getting blessed. The point is about us blessing. Praise the Lord. The seed you plant. The Word. See, you're, we're not trying to get God to do something. That's where we keep screwing up. We're not trying to... If we do this just right, and if we do that just right, and if you do this, and if I tell you to do that, and then you do that, that's... We've we're, we're, we're got the cart in front of the horse. We're locking the barn door after the horse got out and all of those other... Cliches, praise the Lord. I'm saying, we're not trying to get God to do anything. God so loved the world that He gave us everything. He gave us the most important thing Himself. And if, if He gave us Him, how he, shall He not give us all things? Amen. Because of that. Yes, yes, yes. 
We're not trying to get God to do something. God's already done it. What we're trying to do is get our head wrapped around what He's done so that we can operate in it. So it becomes revelation and not just more information that we got to try to sort out every day. God's blessing is already on you. I mean, come on. It's like we got to do this and God's not going to... God's blessing is on you for crying out loud. It's what you do with the Word that bounces. That's what's going to amount to something. God's blessing is eternal. It's for sure. It's locked in. He, we are sealed. It's what we do with Him. Amen. Amen. With whom we have to do. The Word. It's what we do with the Word that manifests. Yes. Je- go back to Genesis chapter 22, verses 17 and 18. We need to, you know, we just need to be straight about this. Just quit the religious mumbo jumbo and let's just move on to being the people that we are natural, normal, abnormal, dysfunctional, what have you, that God loves. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Look, everything he does, he does like seed and, and harvest. Everything. I, in blessing I'll bless you, and in multiplying I'll multiply thy seed. Now we know he's talking about, uh, you know, birth, and, 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 but every, look, everything works this way. This is just a man and a woman having kids. We're talking about the whole universe operates by this same principle. And as the sand, so the seed is the stars of the heaven, the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. You have believed me and acted on that word not on what your senses were telling you. Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Galatians 6, or excuse me, Galatians 3, verses 6 through 9. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness... I'll just throw this in here. Now, we know because of Abraham, we were under the the closest thing to the Abrahamic covenant, which was grace. It was just you believe and you get. Well, he says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. What is righteousness then? Well, it's multiple things. It's not just, man, I'm perfect and pure and holy. That's true because I couldn't have relationship with God. I couldn't be one with God without that. But really... Righteousness, he's saying, you have rights. As my child, as my offspring, you have rights. And here's how you get your rights. Honored. It was accounted to him for righteousness. Why? Because he believed. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel of Abraham, which is what we see when we look at the Old Testament with Abraham, we're seeing basically the gospel of grace. Foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel of Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Praise the Lord. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The Word of God. Hallelujah. You reap what you sow. We read that and go, oh my God. You know, I sowed to a whirlwind. You know, and I, I, I sowed to the wind and reap a whirlwind. We think of it as negative. It wasn't intended to be negative. You reap what you sow. It's not a negative. That's giving you control. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. 
He's telling you, you've got the power. You've got the authority. I'm giving you control. You're going to reap what you sow. Focus on the word. Change the crop. No matter what the world says, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what the banker says, no matter what the lawyer says, no matter what somebody else says, no matter what religion says, you have a choice. You get to choose. You have an option. The unsaved have no option. They've got one alternative. Death. Take the crap or die. So it's an old, you know, kind of, obviously a, a, a cynical way of looking at things, but that's what they used to say. Life sucks and then you die. Yeah. That's true if you're in the world. If you don't have God, and life just happens and then you're dead. Yeah. But for us, we've got a choice. We've got something we can say about life yes. and we're never going to die. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. If you don't plant good seed intentionally, you're going to get what comes up automatically. Sure. If you don't sow the Word of God, you're going to get what's sowed by the world, yep. by religion, yep. by unbelief, yep. by the culture, yep. by the government, sure. by whoever has some authority. Sure. Yep. Alright, look at John 8, verse 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Praise the Lord. I told you there was a lot of scripture, but I don't. I, I, this is the truth. This is the Word of God. This is God. This is life. So, you know, I'm just giving you more life. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. Verse 32, you shall know the truth, the truth will make you free. Yeah. It's God's will for you to prosper. Yeah. It's God's will for you to prosper in every area of your life. Yes. That's true. Yes. That's the truth, right? Yes. And it's because of, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples. Mm -hmm. Disciples just means discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sow the truth and weed anything that contradicts it. Yeah. Yeah. Spray it. Yes. Dig it up. Yeah. Pull it out. Chop it off. Burn it down. Whatever you got to do, just get rid of everything that's, that's not the truth. Right. Yes. Galatians chapter 5 Verses 16 and 18. Remember, the flesh, we think of the flesh and we think this is the flesh. The flesh is the senses. Yep. The way you perceive, the way you relate to this world is through the senses. We are in this world, but we're not of this world, and we're not supposed to be functioning by the laws of this world. We're supposed to be functioning by the laws of grace and love. Yes. Supernatural, the power of God. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're operating, Spirit and truth, if you're operating by the Spirit, you don't have to worry about being manipulated and tricked or deceived by the flesh. And that word lust doesn't mean it's all sexual gratification of some kind. It's talking about the desire to receive through the sense realm instead of through the spirit realm. Right. Right. Mm. Praise the Lord. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And you know that if you've lived for God for more than 24 hours, you know that everything that comes through your intellect will fight what God has said. The doctor will tell you, well, you know, this isn't good. And, you know, we can pray, but, you know, it's been my experience that most people, yeah. this doesn't work out well for them. And you know what I mean. Yeah. The flesh lusts against the spirit because all the time God is saying to you, by my stripes you were healed. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
the bankers telling you, you know, that thing was a bad investment and you are broke. <laughs> and God says, I'll supply all your needs according yes. to my riches and glory yes. by Christ Jesus. Yes. You've got a conflict here between the flesh and the spirit. Yes. And it happens to us multiple times yes. every single day. Yes. The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. What do you want to do? I want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to cast out demons. I want to be a blessing, a financial blessing to people. I want to have so much that I can give it away and not ever even think about it. Yes. Amen? And they, but you, they, you, they fight against each other so that you can't do the things that you want to do, that you would do, that your spirit is leading you to do. But if you be led by the spirit, you're not under the law of the world. The natural laws don't apply to you anymore. I'm talking about in terms of limitations and, and inabilities. Right. Praise the Lord. This I say then. Here would be a good idea. Walk in the Spirit. Walk by this and you won't be able to satisfy the lust of the flesh. Or you won't fulfill the demands of the flesh. You know, you're that age now, you should be worried you got arthritis. That's fulfilling the flesh. Amen? I'm battling right now. They say you got cataracts. I'm saying I don't have cataracts. Amen. I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll confess that right up to when they do whatever they do. Amen? Because I'm still war. Yeah. There's still a war in my members. And that war is between my faith in what God has said and what everything in my body is trying to tell me. It's a decision. It's a choice. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit gets contrary to the other so that you can't do the things. But if you're led of the spirit, you're not under those restrictions. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're led in the Spirit, you're not under the law. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have this great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. See, this went up into heaven, but it left this. And it's the same as him. And so he says, you've got to hang on to your confession or your profession, which is in agreement with what he preached, with the, what the Word of God says. Our confession or our profession doesn't have one physical thing in it. It hasn't got anything that can be seen, felt, or heard. That's why this stuff of, ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm not against that. I'm not saying that we don't have physical senses that we can perceive things even from the other realm. The problem is when we make those priorities, we got a problem. Because this thing is nothing that can be seen, felt, or heard. It's not of the sense realm. It's of the Spirit. Yes. Right. Why? So that it will be by faith. Yes. So when we make everything about, who did you feel that and how did you feel in this? And man, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling that. We are undermining the very thing that Jesus was doing. Now I'm not saying we don't have those feelings. I'm not saying we don't experience it. But it's when we are pursuing those that we lose out on what it is He's really trying to do. Hallelujah. Our profession and our confession haven't got anything that can be seen or heard outside of the Word of God. Right. I'm healed! Praise the Lord! Right. You know, that bad foot, that leg, that whatever it is. But I'm healed! Praise God! Has got 
has nothing to do, my profession, my confession has nothing to do with what I feel or what I see or what I hear. Amen. It has to do with what the Word of God says. I mean, come on, we, we know this because when we're praying and over a situation or a circumstance, it, we're praying in agreement with the Word of God, not with our senses, because our sen if we were going by our senses, we'd just go to bed. Right? Yeah. It's true in everything. Everything works the same way. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. So Abraham, <clears throat> praise the Lord, 1 Corinthians 2 and 5, yeah. that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right. Not in the sense realm, not in intellect, mm -hmm. but in the spirit realm. The power of God. Right. Abraham looked at his body and he saw it exactly as it was. He didn't see something. He didn't see a 20-year-old. Yeah. He saw the 90-year-old or the 99-year-old that he was. He saw it. It was impotent. It was worn out. It was old. He saw Sarah as she was. Another broken vessel. But looking to the promises of God, the Bible says he waxed strong. Mighty. Nothing here changed. In fact, we know it didn't change for years. At least externally. But something changed immediately yes. when he believed God. Yeah. Abraham counted the things that were not as though they were. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. He continued in the word. Amen. And they became. And that's exactly what Jesus said. Uh -huh. If you continue in my word, uh -huh. then you shall be my disciples. All this stuff. Praise the Lord. He believed against all of the evidence of the sense realm. All the evidence in the natural realm. He believed against it. He counted God that promised was able to make good on the promise. That he would watch over his word and bring it to pass that his word would not come back to him void, but would accomplish what he sent it to Abraham to do. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Malachi 3, 17 and 18. Praise the Lord. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, and in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serveth not. Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 18, verse 28 through 32. How are people going to know the righteous? They'll be able to discern between them that believe God and those that don't. Right. Not by how nice we are, not by how rule uh, focused we are, right. but by how much we believe what right. God said, mm -hmm. opposing what the world tries to tell us. Right. That's the wicked. He calls that the wicked. Uh -huh. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God sees us just like Jesus. Praise the Lord. The righteousness of God in Him. 
We have rights because we're righteous. Yes. Colossians says we are complete yes. in Him. Yes. The Word became flesh. We beheld the glory of the Father full of grace and truth. God, the church, the world, creation is waiting. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2.6. Not done here. Hang on. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2 and 6. And hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now our battle, we look, our battle is with principalities and powers, darkness in high places. Praise the Lord. Spiritual wickedness in these high places. Remember, God said the Word comes down. My Word will come down to you like rain and snow. Now, we're not talking about heaven in the sense of God's abode. We're talking about the heaven realm, the heavenly realm, the, the atmospheric realm. Right. Paul went to the third heaven. There's some heaven in between. Yes. Amen. That's where the wickedness is. That's where the evil is. And that's where the Word of God comes. And that's where we send it back to. We're not trying. Look, when he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven, what would I be binding in heaven? Everything that's in heaven, I want on me. Yes. And what am I going to loose down here that God would want in heaven? <laughs> He's not talking about that heaven. He's talking about what's between here and there, where the demonic realm is, where the enemy functions, where he tries to manipulate yes. the systems. Yeah. So when we bind something. On earth, it's bound in that spirit realm. Yes. Because they're all operating in the same way, by the sense realm. Yes. See, the devil doesn't have any spiritual power. His power is manipulation, and he has to get flesh in order to operate through. So he uses the sense realm. And that's why we bind it with spiritual truth. Yes. And we loose healing with our tongue, just like we bind sickness and disease and poverty and yes. so on and so forth. We're not trying to get God to do something that God doesn't want to do. He's already done it. He sent the word to us so that we'll send it back. And we're not sending it back to God. We're sending it back to where those forces are that are trying to control our lives and control the church of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 through 23. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So he's seated in heaven. Not in the heavenlies, but above where those demonic forces are which is the body, the fullness of Him. Okay, so He has put all things under His feet. Yep. Get this. He gave Him to be the head over all things yep. to the church, to us, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Yep. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 6. And He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? So we're seated with Him in heavenly places. We are seated with Him. He's waiting for us in His name to do... Look, Romans 16, verse 20. Romans 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. <laughs> the Word of God, Jesus, is what we're supposed to be doing. Taking Jesus. Taking the Word of God. Yes. Taking what is legally ours yes. and put every enemy of ours yes. under our feet yes. that we might reign as kings with Him. So he said he put it under his feet. Now he tells us, God, a piece of bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's how it's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Satan's defeated. 
we have to enforce that defeat. He doesn't have weapons. His weapons are our stupidity. His weapon is our naivete, our, our inability to believe and trust in what God has said. It's what it's always been. Half God said. That's what he said to Jesus. To, to, to Eve, he said, well, did God say he would die? No, he surely didn't say you were going to die. He, what he said was, you won't be the same as you are now because you'll be like him. I mean, he tried to manipulate the conversation by lying. Taking her words and getting her to use them against herself. And Adam the same way. And everybody else. Romans 5.17 We are to reign with Him. Praise the Lord. Reign in life yes. by one, That's right. the Word of God. That's right. How you reign in life. By Jesus Christ. By the Word made flesh. Yes. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Yes. The living Word. Our identity in Christ destroys the work of Satan in humanity yes. that came through Satan or that came through Adam. Yes. We we'll reverse it. Yes. I'm done. We are new creatures. Yes. We are God's offspring. Yes. Our power is in our identity and our words because they are one and the same. Yes. One and the same. Yes. That's why I said last week, you've got to find yourself in yes. here because this is who you are. Yes. But it's not enough to find yourself in here. You've got to believe it when you find it. Amen. And one of the biggest failures of the church has been to find everybody but us. Find somebody else's anointing. Find somebody else's mantle. Find somebody else's this, somebody else's that. Look, this is a letter to you personally. It's to you, it's about you, and it's for you. And if you see people operating in different levels of, of the supernatural, it's not because they have more than you have, it's because they just understand more. Praise the Lord. They just believe more than you believe. Sure. Yeah. This thing, along with our identity, works for everybody, anybody who will believe. That is the common ground for every believer. Doesn't matter your IQ, doesn't matter your education, doesn't matter your financial background, doesn't matter your, you know, how you were raised, who your parents were. All those things have to do with natural life. But your identity as a child of God supersedes anything and everything in this natural realm. Yes. If you can believe. Yes. All things are possible. Mm -hmm. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's let's just let's say what's true. Right. Stop repeating the lies of the world right. and see what God will do in our midst. Amen. There is a whole people yeah. out there that are looking to the Gentiles yes, they are. to cause and stir up jealousy in them yeah. to have what we have. I got to tell you, most of my Christian life, and I'm not, this isn't to, to be disparaging to God, but just because of my ignorance, I can't imagine any Jew wanting what I had. I mean, forsaking their historic background and all of the they had for this mess. There has to be something that causes them to be jealous, that causes them to see this God in a way that they have not been able to see. Right. And that's what God is doing with us yes. and through us. Praise the Lord. Yes. Not just the Jew, but even the Gentiles who have yet to believe. Yes. Praise the Lord. I, I want to be here when the Lord returns. Yes. Amen. Amen. And the only way for that to happen is for us to finish this book.
to be who He says we are and do what He says we can do. Yes. So that He can be revealed as He truly is. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. And uh, drive careful. And if you hurry, you can get out of the parking lot before I do. <laughs> Have a safe ride home. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.